Hey guys, this is an old iMac that I recently acquired and you can see it's running an old version of Mac OS. So uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna open this up and we are going to replace the hard drive that's inside it. So it has a one terabyte um, mechanical hard drive inside it and we're gonna replace that with a 500 gigabyte SSD. So it's gonna be less storage, but it's gonna be faster. So here you can see I have it laid down on the floor and we're going to go ahead and open this up using these two suction cups. Now, I probably could have done this with one. Now, this is really easy. You just want to be careful. Don't pull on the corner because if you bend it the wrong way, you could break the glass. You probably won't. But this comes out really easily because it's not glued in. It's not taped in. It's super easy. This is You can, you can see this is going to come right out. See, it just pops right out. This is only held in place by like a few metal pegs and magnets. Basically, magnets hold it in there. And those little metal pegs on it make it so that it doesn't, you know, move back and forth or anything. So, uh, yeah, that's it. You basically just pull the thing right out. Do it carefully, but you really don't have to pull very hard at all. It just comes right out. And there you see behind the glass, you see the actual screen. Now, here, this is the iFixit toolkit that I'm going to be using to uh, take this apart. Um, you know, to basically remove it, all the remaining screws and stuff. And uh, yeah, the, check the link in the description if you want to know where uh, you can pick up this same toolkit. And uh, also, if you want to know where you can pick up those suction cups, those are also iFixit suction cups. You can pick those up from iFixit or you can pick them up on Amazon. I got them on Amazon just because I wanted faster shipping. So, uh, and, and the price was basically the same. Now, if you want to, uh, yeah, just check out the links in the description. And, um, you know, I'm gonna try to remember to put the links in there for where you can pick up the suction cups and this toolkit. All right, so I sped this part of the video up because all I'm doing is picking out the right uh, screwdriver head and, you know, unscrewing all the screws around uh, the metal frame here. So. There we go. Now notice these screws are all different sizes. Not all of them are different sizes, but there's three different sizes of screws. Most of them are small, some are medium, some are a lot longer. So uh, yeah, definitely make sure you pay attention to which screws went where. And from here, I'm going to try to pull this off. But we're going to actually have to tilt this up. And so here I am, I'm going to pull this, uh, this metal part of the chassis off this frame here. So this actually slides off. You, you basically just have to, I actually pushed on my thumbs around the edge of the screen, but not actually on the screen and pulled on the edges of the frame. And it comes off, you just have to be careful. So what I'm not paying attention to here is the fact there, there are some cables. There's actually uh, one cable connecting um, to the chassis here that I'm gonna unplug this guy right here. And later on when I, uh, when I take the screen out, there's gonna be a couple more cables connected to that. But the other thing is down at the bottom, well, right here, first I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, I'm just unplugging this cable, paying attention to which way it goes, even though I think there's only one way you can connect that. And that looks like it just goes to some sensor on the chassis. But uh, in any case, at the bottom there, there's also, see what's blocking me right now is uh, the fact that there's a little door at the bottom where the RAM can slide in and out. And I should have um, removed that first. So we're gonna show you in, in a bit, we're gonna cut away to me removing that door first, and then I'm gonna continue pulling the chassis, pulling uh, you know this frame off of the chassis. So here we are at the bottom. And uh, yeah, so I picked out the right screwdriver bit for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and you know first remove that screw or, or loosen the screw, and then I'm gonna pull out that, that little door at the bottom. And that door is basically where you would swap the RAM so you don't actually have to open up the, the whole case or pull off the screen or, or, or anything to uh, swap RAM, but you do if you wanna upgrade the hard drive. And so, yeah, here we go. We're just gonna pull this right away here. And there we go. So now we should be able to pull the rest of this off. So yeah, we're, we're gonna go ahead and just carefully push this up here. And there we go, it's it's coming right off now. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side. And lower this down a bit. And there you go, that's what it looks like after you pull it off. And uh, yeah, it look, looks a bit different now. And as you can see, it, it is, uh, yeah. So it's kind of dusty, it's, it's really dusty in there. And uh, you can see all that, that dust built up on the fan. We're gonna have to clean that up later, but not right, not just yet. We're gonna come back to that and clean that up. Um, probably not gonna record myself cleaning that. But um, anyways, yeah, this over here looks like 
so the, the Wi-Fi chip and the battery, I believe. And see here, the, these are the slots where the RAM would slide in. We see only have one stick of RAM. It's only a gig of RAM. We're going to have to upgrade that later. And see this little clip here that holds it in is actually not that. That little thing is what you pull on to pull the RAM out. That helps you pull it out. But the plastic clip on the front here actually broke a little bit. There's two screws in the center holding it in place. And those are actually i pulled that out too far and they broke a little bit so we're we're still going to be able to push that back in in place um later on see that basically that whole plastic thing on the bottom there i'm just going to push that back up and, and lock it in place tighten those screws up a bit and get it all fixed up later on but uh anyways for now we're going to actually pull this ram stick out just to take a look at it and um, i am going to be upgrading this just not in this video so next video, I'm going to upgrade the RAM. You, you definitely don't need to take this whole case apart to do that. But uh, any case, yeah, see how you can pull, you pull this little uh, plastic strip here and that actually pulls that piece of metal forward, pulling the RAM out. But it's still a little bit tight, so it took a bit of, um, you know, jiggling it around and stuff to actually pull that stick out. And here we go, pulling it right on out here. And this is one stick, yeah, just, just the one stick of one gig of RAM. And that, yeah, that's basically it. I'm trying to get a few good shots of it here, make sure the camera's all focused. Uh, yeah, see, you have those two, two places there. And slide the RAM on this side. And also, there's another slot for another, if it, if it isn't like completely apparent by looking at this from this shot. Uh, you know, there's, there's the slot on the left and the slot on the right. So that, that's kind of what I'm trying to illustrate here. So anyway, in this next uh, scene here, I'm basically just unscrewing everything. I sped this up a lot uh, just because I'm, you know, unscrewing all the screws around the actual screen itself. And uh, now here we have it stood up on its side. And I'm going to kind of show you a view. I'm going to turn it in just a sec and show you a view from the side because uh, you, you can only pull this out so far because of, uh, you know, a couple cables. In the way so i'm gonna unplug one of the cables in a second but uh yeah i just wanted to show you what it looks like from the side so you see how the cables are preventing mode movement and you kind of know what to watch out for so uh you see here um, i'm gonna carefully tilt this like i'm not gonna rip it out and uh, you see that top cable there i'm gonna unplug that one and i'm, I'm just gonna leave that bottom cable in and i'm just gonna kind of uh, fold the screen down really carefully you know, I don't want the actual screen that's underneath the glass to be ripped or, or, or scratched or anything. But uh, anyways, yes, yeah, so this cable is held in place by some tape. I'm going to take the tape off and just throw it away. And I'm going to go ahead and just unplug this here. So this was a little bit of an awkward angle to be doing this with uh, two hands. I have my camera on a tripod. But uh, yeah, you have to hold this thing up and make sure it doesn't fall or get bumped over while I'm plugging that, but got it out. And uh, there's basically only one way that can plug in, so it's not going to be too bad plugging it back in. And so from here, I am basically going to... So see, so we have this other cable on the bottom here, and I did not want to move remove everything to get that one out. So I just wanted to position this really carefully. I'm gonna put like a pad underneath it. So um, it's, it's off camera, you can't see me reaching for it, but I'm, I'm reaching for a pad there. Uh, I'm gonna put that underneath and uh, you know, no dirt or anything on the pad. I'm just gonna carefully just settle, set this down on here. And, and you see this gives you access to everything inside. So yeah, that's, that's basically all, this, all the stuff inside it. And so here, we're gonna actually rotate the camera. So I'm basically picking up my tripod and just moving the whole thing over for a better angle here, just to kind of show you everything that's in here. And zoom in a little bit. Um, so yeah, anyway, I wanted to get a view. Well, I just made give you a, an overall view first, but then we're gonna zoom in on the hard drive you see in the center. But, um, but yeah, so this I think is the heat sink for the CPU that I'm pointing to right there. And it goes out to that fan, that really dirty fan right there. And I, I believe the fan on the other side is for the GPU. I'm not sure I haven't taken the rest of this apart. Now that is the hard drive I pointed to. And then there's the CD drive. So this actually has a CD drive on the side. So yeah, it's a, a big 
uh, you know, mechanical hard drive in the back there. So yeah, taking that out was a little bit, it was a little bit tricky. And um, you're gonna see in just a second here. So there we go, zoomed in a little bit. And I actually fiddled around with this, I, I cut away, but see, I used the screwdriver to actually sort of pry that thing, you know, being careful not to actually break it. But uh, that little clip there was really tough. But once you get that clip out, you didn't actually have to unscrew anything to pull this whole bracket with the hard drive out. So pull the, the hard drive and the bracket that's connected to it out. Then just unplug these uh, SATA connectors, SATA power and SATA data. Um, so there you go. You got a, a terabyte Seagate, Barracuda Seagate drive. So we're going to go ahead and just... Uh, is we're just going to set that to the side and we're going to replace it with this Samsung. Um, yeah, this is an 850 Evo Samsung SSD. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, plug this in. It has the exact same SATA connectors. So, yeah, just another SATA driver we're connecting in here. Basically connect it in the same place. So real easy, real straightforward. Only tricky thing here. Now, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, tr I'm trying to zoom in and get just the right view to show what I'm doing here. Um, you know, if that interests you, but any anyways, so one thing you might have noticed is that there's no actual bracket for this. So yeah, there's, there's no actual bracket for this to uh, sit in here. So what I'm going to uh, have, what I'm, I'm basically gonna do is just set this up here. Now this is not real heavy. It's not gonna pull on anything. It is basically totally fine there. I know this may, may bother some people to see this just sitting in there, not screwed into anything, not secured, but it doesn't have a ton of space to move around. And it's, this isn't like a laptop or anything where I'm gonna be shaking it. And even if it does move a little bit, it'll be totally fine. I'm turning it around to make sure it's as flat as possible, just so there are no issues when I put it back. But there you go, that's where I'm leaving the drive. I know that, that it bothers me a little bit too, but anyways. Here we are, I put the whole thing back together, didn't record myself doing that, um, because it's the same thing in reverse. Now this is that SSD booting up Windows, and it did actually boot all the way into Windows. I didn't show that show it once it gets booted up, but it did boot up. So anyways, I restarted it, held down the Alt key on the keyboard to uh, you know boot into this boot menu, and you see the hard drive is there, and the uh, I, I plugged in a USB install disk for Debian 12 right here. So there's me booting up from that, and then I'm gonna to skip to the next scene. Here we are, you know, on the, the grub menu, selecting install for Debian 12. So I'm not gonna show you the whole install of Debian 12, but basically our SSD is installed, it's plugged in, running the installer. Um, so that SSD was a used SSD, it had Windows on it. I actually pulled it out of an old server that someone had thrown away. So anyways, I'm wiping out Windows. It did boot into Windows, but I have no, I'm not running, I'm not going to be running Windows on this, so uh, here we go. We're installing Debian 12, and it went pretty smoothly, and this only does, this does only have, uh, you know, one gig of RAM. I'm going to upgrade that soon. That's going to be my next iMac video. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be upgrading this. These are the uh, desktop environments I installed. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going with GNOME by default, and you, you'll see it actually runs relatively okay. With, uh, and here we go, we're booted into GNOME. Yeah, I just I basically just skipped ahead with the video. But um, yeah, I cut ahead and yeah, here's a ter couple terminals open. Uh, I think I'm gonna launch, uh, yeah, launch another terminal there. It opens right up. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch a few other things. But uh, here's me typing with one hand and holding the camera with another hand. Yeah, uname a you can see the version, uh, you know, of everything installed here. And what, what else? I think I was going to type something else, but uh, yeah, so i uh, got, got the GNOME desktop. Seems to be functioning pretty nicely, even though we only have a dual core, core 2 duo a CPU on here and only one gig of RAM. But uh, it seems to be working pretty nicely. Still going to try to upgrade that RAM, but you know, with an SSD, uh, um, yeah, this is running pretty well. You can open up the file manager, no real lag with that or anything, no real issues. Hit that window key there. And you can see GNOME switches to this view. And open up Firefox and see how much of a delay this is. So it's a few seconds delay, but that's not too, too bad, right? 
opens right up there, and I, I don't think that's limited by RAM or anything. It's as fast as Firefox normally loads off of, uh, you know, for the first time off of it you know, SATA SST. So you can see here, you can load Reddit, the web page loads, and it's basically functional. You can load, you know, a basic normal standard web page, and it's, this is basically a, a working system up and running. So then the, the reason I like to throw Linux on ancient Macs like this is because Mac OS can't, and see, there you see, that's our dual core CPU there. And yeah, basically ancient Macs like this can't, uh, you, 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 you can't install the newest version of OS X on it. You know, Mac OS is no longer supported on this. So you can't upgrade, update to the latest version. So uh, that's why I like to, um, you know, that, that's why I like to uh, just install Linux on them. That's the thing to do. Once, once a Mac is so old that you can't update uh, Mac OS on it anymore, you may as well just throw Linux on there because then you'll be able to update to newer versions. If you, if you can't update your OS, you're going to run into problems like, you know, eventually a browser will refuse to install on, a, on an OS that's too old and, uh, you know, other software just won't work right. And so if you can't update, you may as well just switch over to Linux and run Linux. In this case, I'm using Debian. So that's what I did here. Now, stay tuned. Um, I'm going to try to come out with another video up upgrading the RAM for this. And we have a lot of other great content coming out you're not going to want to miss out on. So definitely hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know when we come out with new videos. Got a lot of great videos coming out. A lot of Linux stuff, a lot of hardware stuff, electronics, robots, Raspberry Pis, all sorts of great stuff like that. And, um, yeah, just trying to put a lot of great stuff out. And, uh, you know, if that's the kind of thing that interests you, remember to subscribe. And also, if you have your own experiences with something like this, or any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever, leave a comment down below because um, we want to know what you think. And, um, you know, I try to get to back, back to people's comments when I can. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of comments, and I don't always get back to people on time, but I, I try to. Um, in any case, um, yeah, might want to also give me a thumbs up. And, uh yeah, hopefully this video helped someone. I know I, I was surprised at how easy it was to pull off that that screen, and uh, that that was pretty neat. I, I thought that was pretty neat. But um, yeah, hopefully this helps someone. If not, hopefully you found this interesting. And um, that's about it for today. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on that next video.